Welcome, beloved evangelist Gloria Marjorie, coming to bless you with the word of the Most High God, Yahweh. But first, very heart of the gospel, and let's see what the old prophet Isaiah prophesied about the Messiah 700 years before the Messiah was born. And it's found in Isaiah chapter 53. Who, and this is in the Tanakh, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before a shearer is his dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generations? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he hath done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Love at this I know with all my heart, his wounds has paid our ransom. Now, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy. And let's read chapter 22, 23 and 24. According now, thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, then thou shalt bring it unto thine own house, and it shall be with thee until thy brother seek after it, and thou shalt restore it to him again. In like manner shalt thou do with his ass, and so shalt thou do with his raiment. And with all lost thing of thy brother's, which he hath lost, and thou hast found, shalt thou do likewise, thou mayest not hide thyself. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ass or his ox fall down by the way and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. If a bird's nest Chance do be before thee in the way in any tree or on the ground, whether they be young ones or eggs, and the dam sit upon the young or upon the eggs, thou shalt not take the dam with the young. 
but thou shalt in but thou shalt in any wise let the dam go and take the young to thee that thou mayest prolong thy days when thou buildest a new house then thou shalt make a battlement for thy roof that thou bring not blood upon the upon thine house if any man fall from thence thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers seeds lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled Thou shalt not plow with an ox or an ass together. Thou shalt not wear a garment of divers sorts as of woolen and linen together. Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four quarters of the vesture wherewith thou coverest thyself. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasions of speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife and he hated her. And lo, he hath given occasion of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him, and they shall immerse him in an hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife, and he may not put her away all his days. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then, shall, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of the father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she died because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. He in the father's house, so shalt thou put away evil away from among you. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shall thou put away evil from Israel. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then he shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, and you shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried out being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled <coughs> his neighbor's wife, so that thou shalt put away evil from among you but if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her and lie with her then the man only that lay with her shall die but unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing there is in the damsel no sin worthy of death for as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him even so is this matter for he found her in the field and the betrothed damsel cried and there was none to save her if a man find a damsel that is a virgin which is not betrothed and lay hold on her and lie with her and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. A man shall not take his father's wife nor discover his father's skirt. Chapter 23. He that is wounded in the stones or hath his private member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever, because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when you came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against thee Balaam the son of Beor or Pethor, 
of Mesopotamia to curse thee. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Thou shalt not seek their peace nor their prosperity all thy days forever. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in the third generation. When the host goeth forth against thine enemies, then keep thee from every wicked thing. If there be among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanness, that chanceth him by night, then shall he go abroad out of the camp, he shall not come in the camp. But it shall be when the evening cometh on, he shall wash himself with water, and when the sun is down, he shall come into the camp again. Thou shalt have a place also without the camp, whither thou shalt go forth abroad, and thou shalt have a paddle upon the weapon, and it shall be when thou wilt ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee, and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall the camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. Thou shalt not deliver unto his master the servant which is escaped from his master unto thee. He shall dwell with thee even among you in that place, which he shall choose in one of thy gates, where it lieth him best, thou shalt not oppress him. There shall be no war of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God. For any vow, for even both these abomination unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother, usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. <clears throat> unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to in the land with that thou goest to possess it. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it, for the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. That which is gone out of thy lips thou shalt keep, and perform even a free will offering according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God which thou hast promised with thy mouth when thou comest unto thy neighbor's vineyard. Then thou mayest eat grapes thy full at thine own pleasure, but thou shalt not put any in thy vessel when thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor. Then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor, neighbor standing corn. Here ends the reading. Beloved, now, I was just thinking, Jesus Christ suffered terribly. He was beaten with 39 lashes, the blood spiting all over. Were you one of them saying, crucify him? Were you one of the mockers? Beloved, I just hope that you were not one of the mockers, but if you were, beloved, I would urge you to pray to Jesus to be forgiven. Because if not, if your name is not written in the book of life, listen what will happen. I now read out of Revelation chapter 21 starting with from verse 12 to verse 15. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. 
This is the second death. And here it comes. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Let me repeat it. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Beloved, I would urge you to receive Jesus' blood sacrifice for the remission of your sins so that heaven will be your final destination and not hell. So I would urge you to just, just pray with me, beloved, so that your destination will be heaven forever and ever. You'll be with Jesus. Let's pray. I urge you pray. Do not hesitate, beloved. Just pray with me. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died to save me and I thank you so much. I confess I'm a sinner, my Lord, and I repent from my sins. I turn to you. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my God. And now you sure everything you created me to be and everything you give me to use in this life. I surrender all to you, my God. Please take total control of me. Be in the driver's seat of my life. I do understand that now my body is the temple of God. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Help me to glorify and exalt you and magnify your holy name. And as well be a witness for you. Thank you that I did not need to do anything for my salvation. Because Yeshua Jesus said, it is finished. To tell a sign in the Hebrew. That means it's all done. It's over. It's finished. Freely have I been given. Help me, Lord, to freely give the gospel to others. So, my Lord, because your commandment says, Thou shalt not have any gods before me, I will surely not have anything to idolize. I will not love anything or anybody more than I love you. Once again, what can I say? But thank you so much for loving and saving me from eternal punishment. I now declare that I'm a blood board, sanctified, justified, child of the Most High God, and I wear the robe of righteousness in Christ, so I know Father God. And when you see me in that day when I shall surely come to stand before you, and you see the blood of Yeshua for me, your arms will receive me as your very own child. Father, forever you are my God, and forever I am your child, because Jesus, I confess you, you are now my Lord, my Saviour, my Redeemer, my Messiah, and my coming King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and my God. Jesus, while you were on that cross, you said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So I'm so glad that I'm forgiven, and all my praise and thanks is to you, Adonai Yeshua. You said, no man comes unto the Father but by me. Yes, my Lord, I believe there's no other way to the Father. Yeshua Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father but by you. Hallelujah. Yet praise be to God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. God, the three in one. My God, my God, thank you for receiving me in my prayer of surrender. I know now that my name is written down in glory and that your holy angels are rejoicing in heaven. Help me, Lord, always to glorify your holy and wonderful name, and it is in Yeshua's beautiful and majestic name, I pray, Father. Amen. Father, thank you. That for by grace I must save through faith, and that not of myself is the gift of God, not of works, lest I should boast. Beloved, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Beloved, my prayer is that after hearing God's word, you are brought closer to Jesus. God honors faith, so faith comes by hearing the word of God. Shalom, beloved. If you have just prayed to receive Jesus as your Lord, congratulations. You are part of the family of God. You are the king's king. You are the king's kid. Your relationship with Jesus as your Lord will be exciting and satisfying under his guidance. So, beloved, that God's will be done for you and not your will. Beloved, just surrender all to Jesus. God's will, not our will, is always the best. You will have what God says you can have. You'll be what God says you can be. You will learn how faithful and good God is. Well, heaven will be your final destination. You will be with Jesus. Beloved, this amazing, kind, compassionate Jesus who died to save you from eternal punishment wants you to spend time with him. How will you spend time with Jesus, beloved? Yes, how? You read his word every day, then you pray. Just talk to Jesus. Tell him everything. Jesus will be listening with love and compassion because you are precious to him and he loves you dearly. So you can say, Abba. Father, that's Daddy God. Now, beloved, 
when you pray, how shall you come to God? Beloved, you will say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, my Lord. Why? Because Jesus said nobody can come to the Father, only through him. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Next, you start praising, thanking, and blessing God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Well, beloved, now you are ready to make a request known to God. God will always listen and answer you. Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes no, sometimes not now. God will always do for you what is best and right for you. Don't give up, pray without ceasing. Beloved, just have the deepest respect and reverence and worship and thankfulness for God. He alone is worthy. There's no God like Jehovah. Yahweh, our God, is God, period. The word of God says, be still and know that I am God. Beloved, this is Evangelist Gloria Marcia coming to you with a challenge. As Christians, we are to tell one another of Jesus. I challenge you today to tell someone, whether they be a stranger, friend, family member, believer or unbeliever, I challenge you to tell them of God's grace, the free gift and the promise of their name written in the book of life. Do, that, do it today, beloved, while the opportunity presents itself, for we know not what tomorrow brings. This is Evangelist Gloria Marjorie, sending God's blessing your way. And remember, beloved, God said, nobody and nothing can pluck you out of his hands. Forever he is your God and Father, forever you are his child. God bless you, beloved, the next time. And now, Jonathan Kahn giving the ironic blessing. of his grace upon every part of your life. The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob cause his glory of his presence to fall on you, and the Lord give you shalom, light, fullness, peace, all the blessings of his love. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach in the name of Messiah Jesus, our hope in his name, and all his people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Jonathan Khan. Here now is Shireen to play on the strings. God be with you till we meet again. In loving memory of my beloved son and Shireen's brother, Emmanuel Christian, who is sheltered in the arms of Jesus. Praise God. Mm -hmm. 